Hello YouTube and welcome back, brothers and sisters, to this land we call Bohemia. As you can see, we're in Privy Slavitz, obviously playing Kingdom Come Deliverance, and this video is bringing you a new, updated, top 10 list for short swords in Kingdom Come Deliverance. This list brought to you by pop popular demand, focusing specifically on damage and taking out all other pieces of the equation, as I as I had done it originally. This list will be more inclusive because it's 10, and although there are more sword swords than that in the game, these 10 are the 10 best, so should be focused on primarily, and uh, that's why they'll be, this video will only be featuring them. But in that spirit, you can still consider it mostly an all-inclusive list. If you like this list, please be sure to like it, comment down below if you have any changes, suggestions, if, you know, your personal favorite sword, whatever it may be. And if you like this type of content, I strongly suggest subscribing and turning on notifications so you can see this stuff all the time, because I produce it all the time. But, uh, let's just jump right into it. Every time we do a sword, we're gonna do, we'll show it to you on the, uh, wheel there, so you get a nice close look at it. We'll analyze the appearance, and then we'll look at the stats in the menu. So let's just jump right into it with number 10. So, starting us off at number 10, we have the Reliable Blade. Now, this weapon, I think, looks kind of goofy, but uh, it was also hard to find. Uh, only place I've ever been able to find this in the game is on a couple Sasaw guards, so I actually ended up having to massacre an entire town to find this sword for this list. So, I hope you enjoy it. Their blood is on your hands. Uh, but starts off with the visual analysis here. We've got a globe-shaped pommel there. Looks pretty cool with a bunch of points on it. A, what appears to be a metal handle, uh, which is all one piece with the guard, so I imagine that's not super comfortable to fight with. Uh, going into a relatively dirty-looking blade, considering it's supposed to be in perfect condition, but, you know, decent appearance overall, I think. Then if we pop into the menu, you can see here it says, This short sword has ideal defense capabilities. You won't do a lot of damage with it, but at least you have a better chance of keeping your skin. So this is what I consider to be a good secondary weapon for archers, or people who, you know, melee up close isn't their primary source of combat, but it's good to have. Uh, it has a minimum agility level of 8 to use, balanced stab and slash damage of 44, so not super high, but also, you know, better than they make it sound in the description. Uh, defense of uh, 77, charisma of 12, and a durability of 80, which is alright, uh, with a price point of 854 groschen. So, you know, decent sword. Next up at number 9, we have a sword that I just love the name of, the Mercenary's Bedfellow. If anyone knows what that means, just let me know. I, I, I think it means something, you know, so, sort of a double entendre, but if, if it has a better meaning, let me know in the comments. Uh, starting off visually, I like the sword. It's awesome. It's very dark. Uh, Good for a bandit playthrough, or a mercenary, as it were. Uh, start with the pommel. We've got that awesome one, two, three, what is that, Octa octagonal pommel there with a uh, sort of medium brown with iron fittings handguard and a, uh, a cross guard right there. It seems to have weird hooks at the end. That's pretty cool looking. Uh, very thick blade here we've got. Uh, my guess would be this is more of a slashing weapon, but who knows? You know, what do I know? So we'll just take a peek at this here weapon right here in the menu, uh, and it uh, turns out, okay, well, let's just read it. The blade of this short sword, dulled by years of combat, no longer causes much damage, but a well-timed stab of the tempered and still sharp point will catch a lightly armed opponent unawares. Uh, this has a minimum agility of 40 use, balanced stab and slash damage of 45, which makes that description confusing. One would think if the side was so bad that it wasn't good anymore, it wouldn't have the same damage as the point that's still sharp. Uh, anyway. The defense of this is 65, charisma is pretty low at 6, durability is really low at 38, and it has a price point of 146. So, overall, not a fantastic weapon. Uh, but that's why it's at number 9. Next up at number 8, we have the Stalwart. A very bulky sword, in my opinion. Just look how big that grip is in your hand. Uh, very, very short handle, too. Uh, here we have the triangular pommel, very popular in this game, must be something about the time period. Uh, straight cross guard. You don't get much straighter than that, do you? Uh, of course, you know, who knows. Uh, <laughs> uh, looks to be a hand-wrapped, maybe a uh, repaired handle there. It looks kind of, you know, like it's been repaired over time. Uh, wide blade at the end, tapers well down to a pretty dull point. Uh, I'm guessing this one's going to be slash again, but with my track record, who knows. Okay, so checking it out here. Going to rotate you there so you can see it. Uh, it says, a heavy, resilient short sword that can be relied on, whether the wielder is chopping wood or skulls. The stalwart's Heavy weight and tough blade material are its primary advantages. I don't know if I'd chop wood with a sword. There might be a better tool for that. I can't think of one. If, if there's a better tool for chopping wood, why don't you let me know down in the comments? Because apparently, you know, the makers of Kingdom Come didn't think of it. Uh, minimum agility level of 70 use. That's not too high. Uh, balanced stab and slash of 46. I'm surprised you could force that dull point there. Oh, never mind. I'm not going to go down that road. Uh, defense of 74. So that's halfway decent. Charisma of 11. Eh. Durability of 88, that's pretty good. Uh, price point of 900 and 
44 Groshen. So eh, that's that's a good number eight right there. That's what I think. Next up at number seven, we have, of course, the Pages Sword, as it's uh, pretty obvious from the design here. Uh, small circular pommel there with a very fat grip. I don't know why. One would think Pages would be younger and have smaller hands, but we'll see. Uh, go into a pretty cool looking cross guard. Tapers out from the middle, gets wider at the ends. Upward, good for blocking. Uh, nice groove down the middle of the blade, almost all the way. Uh, some might say uh, three quarters of the way. I don't know, maybe more. Uh, but, you know, decent looking weapon overall. Kind of kind of rough looking, but one would expect that from a page. So here we are in the menu, and it says, The status of Squire entail many duties and responsibilities. I think they're missing an S there on entail. Uh, as well as many benefits, including bearing a sword. This short sword is more a ceremonial weapon and a mark of social rank, but in the hands of a skilled swordsman, it can do a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Man, that'd be a great place to insert that. Too bad I'm bad at editing. Uh... Interesting here, I like how it says the status of Squire, and yet it's the Page's Sword. One would think if you're a Squire, you'd have a Squire Sword. It's a different rank, trust me, I know that. Uh, requires a minimum agility of 7 to use, uh, balanced stab and slash of 48, so that's not too terrible. Still lower damage than any long sword. Not trying to pull rank here. Blunt damage of 5, which one would guess from the wide blunt blade. Uh, defense of 69, which isn't awful. Charisma of 12, which is uh, alright. Man, I just, I'm not impressed by the charisma of these swords. Durability of 56, which is pretty low. And a price point at 537, so that's the Page's Sword. Next up at number 6, we have the shorter version of the Crusader Sword, so I guess this would be the French version. Ooh, burn. Uh, good thing I don't have many French fans. Uh, here we go, uh, it's got the cross-looking pommel there, that's why I call it the Crusader Sword. You gotta, you gotta bear with me on my subtle humor, or I guess lame humor. Uh, upward bearing cross guard there, good for deflecting blows. Uh, three grooves along the blade, most of the way up to a decent tapered point. Uh, pretty cool looking weapon in my opinion. Here we can see it says, a well-balanced short sword, remarkable primary, primarily for its well-forged point. Well, one would guess needles are for stabbing, uh, or for sewing. Uh, but this one, I guess, wouldn't be such so good at that one. Uh, has a minimum agility of 6, stab damage of 50, and a slash damage of 40. So here we're obviously going to want to stick to stabbing. Captain Stabbing over here. Uh, defense of 69, so that's eh, alright, but it's a good number, so I like the sword. Especially considering it's good for stabbing. Uh, Charisma of 10, which is pretty low. Durability of 49, which is really low. And a price point of 319, so there you go. Next up at number 5 we have the Robber Baron Sword, which is the short sword answer to St. George's Sword based on the pommel there. Uh, we've got that same fern looking engraving on the pommel. Brown grip, uh, flat cross guard, and a decently pointy kind of tapered blade there with a single groove go going down the middle. Very, very attractive sword there. So here we can see it says, a short sword of suspicious provenance. That's a 50 cent word. It looks well preserved and is quite well balanced for slashing, stabbing, and bashing over the head, whether helmeted or not. Let's not look a gift horse in the mouth and not concern ourselves with the sword's inglorious history. Uh, now, a fun thing about the Robber Baron sword is it's kind of a rare sword to come across in the game. I, I played the game a lot, and I, you know, don't handle many, many of these these swords. Wink, wink. Uh, the minimum agility here is nine, so that's decently high, but not terrible. Stab damage of forty-five. Slash damage of 50 and a blunt damage of 3, so I guess that it's not equally good for stabbing, slashing, and bashing, considering there seems to be a difference in some of those numbers. But, uh, so, it, it's obviously the best at slashing out of the 3. Defense of 75, which isn't bad for a short sword. Charisma of 16, which is pretty good for a short sword. And a durability of 85, which is also alright for a short sword. With a price point of 1500 Groshen, this thing is, uh, pretty decent. Next up at number 4, we have a sharp looking sword, pardon the pun, which is the Coxcomb fun name. Uh, here we have kind of a, I don't know, bulb-shaped pommel there. Pretty decent looking with a darker grip. Uh, unique looking cross guard there. I don't know if any other swords in this game share that, but that looks pretty cool. Kind of circular. Looks difficult to make. Uh, very plain looking blade tapered to a halfway decent stabbing point. Uh, looks like the edge is, you know, pretty well maintained, but, you know, a duller gloss to it, so not quite so flashy. So here we see it says, uh, short sword with a sharp blade. A well-aimed chop will inflict a wound on even an opponent in light armor, but fending off blows with the edge can soon dull the blade. So that's not great to hear. But uh, this one only has a minimum agility of 5 to use, which isn't terrible. Stab damage of 39, which isn't great. Slash damage of 55, which is alright. And blunt damage of 2, which is even lower than the rest of them. Uh, defense of 68 is pretty low. Charisma of 10 is also pretty low. And a durability of 54 is also pretty low. And the price 
thankfully enough, is also low at 368. So personally, you know, if I was making the list based on my equation, this would be a lower ranking sword. But you know, damage is the most important thing. Next at number three, we have one of the sharpest looking swords in the game, basically the scaled down version of Herod's sword. This is the Noble Sword, which is also a pretty rare sword to find. Uh, can be found in a treasure hunt. Check out my treasure hunt guides if you want to find it. Uh, here we have the red jeweled pommel there, uh, gold coloration for the pommel, the little piece on the hand grip and the guard, uh, also upward facing. It says ashy, which I guess I don't know what that means. Uh, someone knows, let me know in the comments, that'd be awesome. Seems to have kind of a taper there, that's pretty cool looking. Uh, and the blade looks really nice, so I, I, I'm a huge fan of this sword. Here we can see it says, primarily a symbol of aristocratic power and only secondly a weapon. The fine swordsmith handiwork will command respect, not only from feudal subjects, but also from foes. A master swordsman can work wonders with this noble short sword, but if not handled properly, it's of no use other than ornament. Wow, that was kind of hard to read. They wrote the whole book about this one. Uh, it has a minimum agility of 11, 11 to use, a balanced stab and slash of 61, a higher blunt damage of 6, so that's pretty good. Uh... Defense of 75, not bad. Charisma of 18, pretty good. Durability of 53, a little bit lower there. And a price point of 1,673 groschen. So I love this sword. Fantastic sword. Had a lot of requests for this one in my last short sword video because uh, it didn't show up. But the main reason I didn't have this one show up is because it's more difficult to find. Next up, our runner-up here at number two is the Razor. This one's already making my, me eat my words from earlier on when I said the Coxcomb is the only one with that kind of grip. Well, here it is right here again, or I should say crossguard. This one having the bulb shape. This looks a lot like the Coxcomb, now that I think about it. Uh, but it's obviously more ornate, and it looks like a nicer weapon. Uh, blade looks nice and shiny, very well maintained. Kind of a, a rounder point there. But uh, one thinking the Razor is more of a slashing weapon. Right here it says, a short sword with a fine quality sharp blade, which can slash through any armor and chop an opponent without armor into goulash meat. Had to work in that uh, Eastern European uh, reference there. Minimum agility of 9, a stab damage of 46, which is decent, a uh, slash damage of 64, which is pretty dang good, and a blunt damage of 3. This has 72 defense, which is alright, 16 charisma, which is pretty good, and a durability of 68, which is middle of the road at best. Uh, price point of 1,249 groschen, so sharp looking blade in my opinion. Next up at number one we have everyone's favorite, the Stinger. This one is an awesome looking weapon, I love this weapon. Most of the game I use this weapon. Uh, we have a, I don't know, four point pommel, looks pretty cool. Uh, light brown grip and an upward facing cross guard, nothing super fancy there but it's a neat looking design. And on the blade it says what I assume is Latin or some sort of, you know, language I don't speak, that says Isum hab hab mus so I don't know what that means. Uh, nice looking blade though. Uh, fine edge, sharp point. Very, you know, obviously it being the number one in the game, this is a good sword. So here in the menu, you can see it says the Stinger is a versatile short sword with a very sharp point. The blade won't take too much hacking or chopping, although a stab at the right moment can easily deliver a fatal wound, even through thick plate armor. And I can attest to that. I when I use this weapon, I only hit R1, you know, on PlayStation, I'm only stabbing with this weapon. And one will see why. It has a minimum agility level of 10, which is middle of the road, obviously, 10 out of 20. Uh, stab damage of 79, which is actually the highest damage for any melee weapon in the game. Uh, slash damage of 47, blunt of th uh, 3. Defense of 76, charisma of 17, which is, you know, pretty good. And a durability of 86, which is pretty high for a short sword. A price point of 1894 groschen. This being the number one short start of the game. Also my favorite short start in the game. So it's a great way to end the video. Hope you liked it. If you did, remember to leave a like. Any suggestions or corrections, leave them down in the comments below. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. If not, I guess you should give that dislike button a view. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, go ahead and drop them down in the comments section below and I'll do my best to address them as soon as possible. If you like this content or this game, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on all the quality content that I release here. If you need any help navigating, I've got a helpful little link right here on the screen that'll help you subscribe to this channel, and I've also got one that'll lead you to another one of my fantastic videos. But in any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.